Good morning and welcome. My name is Reverend Gilbert Ham Jr. and I'm one of the associate ministers here at Ebenezer Baptist Church. And once again, it's my pleasure to welcome you to our online worship experience. But before I get started, I do want to say Happy Father's Day to all of the fathers out there. Uh, we certainly appreciate you, we certainly appreciate your sacrifice and all that you do. And we want to take this time to celebrate you. I have the awesome privilege to introduce our pastor, Pastor Gilbert S. Ham Sr., who's going to be bringing us a message, a father's plea. Oh man, I know that you're going to enjoy this word. All right, so let's get started. on this subject, a father's plea, a father's plea. In our text today, Jesus will encounter problems resulting from a lack of faith and reveal to his disciples the centrality of faith and the supreme importance of prayer. If we can come to understand and practice these two keys, my brothers and sisters, we can unlock the door leading to supernatural power in our lives. Now, the account begins 
with the disciples coming down from the Mount of Transfiguration. Jesus had been miraculously metamorphosized in their sight. His entire person was transformed into a radiant glory. It was the glory of the divine interperson of Jesus. Now, for a brief moment, on top of that mountain, eternity and time were joined. And the glory of God, the Son, shone through. Now, as they came down the mountain, they were discussing a theological teaching. The appearance of Elijah on top of the mountain along with Moses had brought this question to their minds. Verse 11 through 13. And they asked him, saying, Why say the scribes that Elias must first come? And he answered and told them, Elijah, verily truly, cometh first, and restoreth all things. And how is it written of the Son of Man that he must suffer many things and be set at naught. But I say unto you that Elias is come, that Elias is indeed come. And they have done unto him whatsoever they listed as it is written of him. Now, the disciples didn't understand the teaching that Elijah would be the forerunner of the coming of the Messiah. They had just seen Jesus affirm as the Messiah of God. Mm -hmm. And yet, he had come before the appearance of Elijah on the mountain. What did this mean? Were the scribes wrong? Was Elijah not to come before the Messiah? Jesus pointed out to them that Elijah does come first and that indeed one had come already in the spirit and power of Elijah. Now we know from Jesus' teachings, teaching in another place, that John the Baptist came in the spirit and power of Elijah. And so Jesus was explaining these things on the way down to the valley. No doubt, as the disciples and Jesus descended the mountain, they were filled with the afterglow of the marvelous experience they had just been privileged to be part of. They were full of divine encouragement. But what they were about to confront was altogether different. What they were about to experience was an encounter with human insufficiency. An encounter with human insufficiency. Look verses 14 through 18. And when he came to his disciples, he saw a great multitude about them and the scribes questioning with them. And straightway all the people, when they beheld him, were greatly 
amazed and running to him saluted him and he asked the scribes what question ye with them and one of the multitude answered and said master I have brought unto thee my son with half with half a dumb spirit and whatsoever he taketh him he Tareth him and he foameth and gnasheth with his teeth and pineth away. And I speak to thy disciples that they should cast him out. Cast him out. And they could not. And they could not. Now, the first thing Jesus would encounter. Here in the valley below was human insufficiency. He would encounter the failure, the failure of his own disciples to deal with a demon-possessed boy. Notice first the astonishment of the people, the astonishment of the people. In verse 15 it says that when the entire crowd saw him they were amazed. They were amazed greatly. Question. Was it that they were just surprised to see Jesus? Or was there something more? Perhaps there was. The Amplified New Testament reads, and immediately all the crowd, when they saw Jesus returning from the Holy Mount, his face and person yet glistening, were greatly amazed and ran to him and greeted him. Perhaps the glory, perhaps the glory of the transfiguration still radiated upon Jesus' person. It could have been much like when Moses returned from the Holy Mount in Exodus chapter 34. In that account, we find Moses still growing with the radiance of God's glory. In Moses' case, it came from without. But in Jesus' case, the glory came from within. Perhaps that is what the crowd saw and were astonished by. No doubt, no doubt, they have seen Jesus many times before. So it was not a surprise to see him again. But now, somebody say now. Yeah. But now, he was glowing with the glory of God. Right. Listen, when we encounter the glory of God, it is indeed a fearful thing. Mm -hmm. That is why Jesus came in the form he did. The physical body of Jesus masked the eternal glory of God. Right. Jesus could not have come in the fullness of God's glory. Had it done so, we could not have been, we could not have borne it. It would have been so totally awesome and powerful that no flesh could have stood in his presence. We can only behold the glory of God in a certain small measure. But as we do, the scripture teaches we are changed from glory to glory yeah, yeah. into that same image. Yeah. I wonder 
if you're praying with me. Now, we next come to the argument of the scribes. The argument of the scribes. Verse 14 says that a large crowd was gathered around his disciples and that the scribes were arguing, arguing with them. Now the argument centered around the disciple inability to deal with the demon possessed. They had tried and failed. And no doubt the scribes were giving them a hard time. As you recall, the scribes were not particularly fine of Jesus nor his disciples. I'm sure they took this opportunity to derive them and their master concerning their impotence. Now, my brothers and sisters, the world has not changed much since then. It only takes one thing for the world to condemn all of Christianity. The scribes have seen many miracles, but they chose to attribute them or contribute them to the devil Beelzebub. But now, when they saw a failure, they were quick to condemn the entire ministry. Listen, my brothers and sisters. God, somebody say God. God, God is moving yes. in his church today. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Hey. And there are still those who will condemn all the good that has been done because of one failure. We must be careful lest we do as much. We must not be quick to judge based on human failure. The only reason you have human failure is because you have humans attempting to do the work. And that will never change. But human failure does not reflect upon God, but upon us. And they could not. 
Now, this man, listen now, had a child who was in horrible shape. Yeah. In Jesus' inquiry later in the text, we find that this man's son had been this way since childhood. Yes. Verse 21. Yes, yes. The devil was seeking to destroy yeah. this man's son. Yes. And he, in his utter desperation, had come to Jesus. Oh, turn to your neighbors and neighbors, that's a good place to go to. Amen. To come to Jesus. Oh, yes, he came to Jesus. Why? His heart was broken. He, 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 he loved his son. You can hear his anguish. As he says in verse 22, I have, have compassion on us yes, and help us. Yes, in other words, Jesus, take pity on us and help us. I wonder if you're praying with me. Now, now, this man. Listen now, was not condemning the disciples. He was pleading his case. Right. He had brought his son to them, and they had tried and failed. Listen, human inadequacy was apparent both in the desperation of the father and the failure of the disciples. They had attempted to apply a religious form, formula, formula, and it had not worked. They did not have the power in themselves to make it work. The Father was powerless as well. If he could have done anything for a son, he would have. And of course the son was powerless in his own bondage. But what had happened to his disciples? Had he not sent them out only weeks before to cast out demons and heal the sick? Now, he had been apart from them for only a brief time. And they were powerless. Had they forgotten all he had taught them? This was the situation Jesus encountered at the foot of the mountain. Now, how would Jesus respond to it? What could he say or do in the midst of this encounter with human insufficiency? What we find next is point number two, an exhortation to personal dependency. An exhortation to personal dependency. Note verses 19 through 22a. And he answered, that is Jesus' answer, and said, Oh, faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him unto me. I like that last statement. Bring him on to me. Verse 20, and they brought him unto him. And when he saw him straightway, 
Father, how long is it ago since this came unto him? He said, I was a child. He said, of a child. And oftentimes, it had cast him into the fire and into the waters to destroy him. And that's what the devil is all about. Oh, yeah. He's about trying to destroy you. Yes, yes. Now, notice the challenge of the situation. Notice the challenge of the situation. Jesus, disciples, had said, now all eyes were on him. Would he be able to do more? Was that failure indicative of a removal of God's blessing from Jesus' ministry? No doubt the scribe would have loved to see Jesus fail in this regard as well. How would Jesus handle it? How would Jesus handle it? Well, he handled their challenge with a challenge of his own. Uh-huh. He identified the problem as a lack of faith. He called it unbelief. It was a difficult situation. Here was a boy who was severely demon possessed. Mm -hmm. He had been so since childhood. Mm -hmm. The situation was grave. But Jesus was up to the challenge. I said Jesus was up to the challenge. Look, verses 22, 22b through 24. Now, the Father says, but if thou can do anything, yes, yes. have compassion on us and help us. Verse 23, Jesus said unto him, Uh-huh. If thou canst believe, yeah. all things are possible to him that believeth. And straightway, and straightway, the father of the child cried out, and with tears, I can't just overlook that. I said the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe, help thy my unbelief. Yes, Lord, I believe, but help thou my unbelief. Belief. I wish I had some help in here. Amen. Now, we see the condition of the miraculous. We see here, my brothers and sisters, the condition of the miraculous. The Father said to Jesus, but if you can do anything, and Jesus Jesus replied, if you can believe. Yes, yes. I believe I said it again. Yeah. The Father said to Jesus, but if you can do anything. And Jesus replied, if you can believe. 
slave. Listen, my brothers and sisters. Faith is always the condition to receive anything in the kingdom. The Bible says in Hebrews that without faith, uh -huh, it is impossible to please God. That if we would come to God, we must come to Him in faith. You see, faith is the key that unlocks the door to the miraculous for us. Jesus said in verse 23, all things, not some things, but all things are possible to him who believes. Listen, if we would see God move in our lives or in the lives of others, we must believe. I believe I'll say that again. If we would see God move in our lives or in the lives of others, we must believe. Now, when the Father had heard this, he cried out, Lord, I believe. So 
saw Jesus speak to this spirit. And then the boy go into convulsions. And then his body became lifeless. Perhaps the scribes were saying, heal him indeed. You killed him. But then Jesus reached out his hand. And the boy got up. and work 
thank God for your presence this morning. And let me just say this, because you have made the sacrifice to come, because he cares, he has a hedge all around you. Thank you, Lord. Hello, it's me again. I know you were encouraged by that word, a father's plea. I hope that you get an opportunity to share it with someone so that they can be encouraged as well. That no matter what situation we find ourselves in, that the Lord will hear our cry. Please stay in contact with us by going to our website, www.ebcwilmington.org. On the contact page, just leave us your information so that we can stay in contact with you and let you know what's going on here at the ministry. 
Of course, we're on Facebook at EDC Wilmington, as well as on YouTube at Ebenezer Baptist Church of Wilmington, Delaware. So once again, thank you so much for taking an opportunity to uh, join with us. We certainly hope that you will keep us in prayer and hopefully one day we'll get the chance to worship with you together physically. All right, so from Ebenezer Baptist Church and our pastor, Pastor Gilbert S. Ham Sr., be safe, take care, and God bless.